first, right? So we'll have this one right here. We'll do Dawson A first. We'll, we'll just do do the ones we did a little bit of testing, like the, the three of them. We'll make it quick. So I would definitely think for Dawson A, um, for this boss in particular, for ease of utility, like to play, not for really prog, but just to like easy to play for you to dodge mechanics, it would definitely be Monk for S tier. Just like to dodge mechanics. Because you can literally... You can literally transcend this over the rings and just make your life so much easier in the melee. Um, so that would definitely be S tier for the utility based. Easily S tier. And then second for probably around... Uh, probably around A tier for like ease of utility and the, like cheese mechanics would probably be Prop Paladin. Because you can easily... You can spell word the uh the knockback ability that she that uh that he or she cast so it kind of makes it super easy you can immune that person if they don't have any immunity which might save healer's mana it's kind of a tier there um and then uh dk would probably be around c tier here because he's so freaking slow but he can't death grip the ads actually we might move in the a tier Because I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate the kind words. Uh, but DK, I'm, I'm. You guys think he's A tier or more C tier? DK, like we're talking about Dustin A right now. Whether it's like whatever boss it is, just like ease of, ease of utility progression. You guys think he's A tier? Because you can grip the cores, right? You grip cores. You can AMC the uh, the big explosion on Mythic. Like we're talking about Mythic. We ain't talking about heroic. So I think with being able to grip the cores and move the cores into melee range for your melee and also be AMZ, I, I think you're right, Kelly. I think uh, DK is really A tier there. Yeah, it, exactly. I think it's really good, like utility wise. I think it's gonna be A tier. Um, Warrior. Actually, we'll do Demon Hunter next. Demon Hunter, um, just the way it plays, uh, it doesn't bring much to the raid, especially since Vin, Vin is Demon Hunter. Currently, you'll be bringing them because of Darkness. You're always standing up boss for Darkness. And as well as with the new reset of the um, the Havoc's tier set, um, Havoc is just going to be brought because of Darkness and just because the tier set was reworked. Yeah, I, I honestly would even kind of move it to D tier. Kind of was that for saying. It's definitely kind of D tier right here. Um, we'll go to Warrior next. Warrior... Um, whether it's Kyrian, I don't think Race to Rule first, I don't think you'll see the Necrolord just because Guardian is so much better. We won't see the Necrolord banner at all. And for Dawson in particularly, all he can do, he can't even leap over the lines because we tested it. I had my warriors during Mythic, uh, Mythic testing where I had them leap over to see if they can leap over the line. They instantly died. So I would even say that Prot Warriors even D tier here. And just his ability to pick up adds is just a normal taunt. It's not like, you know, Monk can make him move faster, DK to grip him. It's just a basic taunt. It, it can't be really spell where that many effects on the boss. It's kind of like whatever. Um, Druid? Now, what chat telling me, you know, after me looking at, you know, Kindred Spirit and the new Legendary coming out, uh, being able to run double Lego, I would honestly move this to S tier with that change, especially having on top of that Stampede Roar. Like if you ran DK Guardian, it'd be insane. And then on top of that, just for Dustin in particular, yes, you can't, you know, transcends over, you can't spell where the guy getting hit. But in general, you're getting your warlock, your mages, whatever your rogue, so much damage during that DPS check period, it might actually save your healer's mana or get you through that shield that's incredibly difficult. Yeah, exactly. It's like every single mate, you're just blasting on the boss. So I think this is going to be a big deal on that boss for Dustin A in particularly. Um, so this is my this is kind of the tier list currently for uh, for Dustin A. Whatever boss tier list Blizzard decides to put them in there for. But this is kind of for that Dustin A. Just from what we've seen so far during Mythic testing and just based on utility and kind of what each tank brings. All right, next boss we'll do real quick. We'll do... Um, We'll just jump down right to Skolex. We'll, we'll go right into Skolex here. For Skolex, I would honestly say with the uh, being able to leap and stuff and move around, 
based on how much damage the boss is hitting you for, I would definitely put Monk here on S tier because Shadow Maw, I was able to get it to like, he was at three stacks with the uh, the debuff from us popping him in and out three times. And I was able to survive Rift Maw once I figured out my, you know, my trinkets and stuff, my expel and timing my dampen harms and making sure I had 10 stacks of a celestial brew. And with the new tier set bonus that monks have, having having the ability, if it doesn't get nerfed, having the ability of having 150k HP going into every single Rift Maw is just, it's huge. Like, very rarely do you, do, do you have to call for bubble or pain sub because you just have so much HP on top of your 60, 64k celestial shield that you have. You almost, you can have almost up to 240k HP every single Rift Maw. And the ability does 220,000 damage. So you can almost survive it without even clicking anything. It's very good. Yeah, exa exactly. And it's kind of what we're doing. Kind of just looking utility-wise. So I'm definitely taking an S tier just based on survival and just like utility-wise. And being able to transcend it down every time Skull S knocks you into the sky. Like ease of play, Monk is S tier. Ease of play. Because if you mess up, you can still recover from it. Paladin, I'd put down here in B tier. Actually, no. I'd actually put Prop Paladin on Skolex as AS tier because if your off tank is really bad, like he's bad at the game, you can literally Divine Shield yourself and you can take the Rind and a double Rift Maw. Like, if, you make a, if your tank makes a mistake or he dies, you could tank the boss the whole time. Well, like, within your Divine Shield window, and then B-Res the off-tank if he, if he messes up. You can B-Res him and, like, recover a pull. Like, you're at 10% on Skull X, and then your your off-tank or main-tank dies. You can literally tank up, you can pick up the boss, Divine Shield, and survive a double Rift Maw and, like, kill boss. And plus, you know, Ash on top of that. Um, with it, as well as what Zephyr saying, with it being the highest HPS, Ash and my actually recover you here. Just covering up the hps off obviously having those free word of glories to throw out on the people that are getting a big stack of debuffs i think it's s tier utility based here as well as having spell wording you know having spell word you can spell word your off tank if he's getting really low or rift is coming out you can spell word him and completely avoid the rift mod completely and of those that don't know it does like two hundred twenty thousand damage it's it's incredible um but for now, the next one, I would say um, utility-wise, was really good on this boss. It's definitely Druid. He's definitely going to be A tier. I'm obviously putting a little bit lower because he can't survive. I mean, he can. he's going to have to time his cooldowns perfectly. It's not really ease of play. It's more of just, you know, he's pretty decent. But it's not ease of play. These two are guaranteed. You can make a lot of mistakes on and still kill the boss. And you can recover really bad mistakes with these two um, classes. Druid, on the other hand, doesn't really have anything to recover mistakes that your raid team might make or that you might make yourself. But you do bring the Kindred Spirit. You do bring the big debuff, the big buff. You do bring Stampede Roar. And when you do get knocked into the sky, you can pick Wild Charge and Instant Charge back onto the boss. So it doesn't go ahead and smack another melee. So that's definitely A tier. Um, just bring that kind of stuff in general. Um, Death Knight... From what I saw during testing and just how much HPS they were doing, the Death Knight was literally doing, I think it was close when I was watching Pop-Tart Corndog, it was doing like 10,000 plus HPS. Like just blood decay from his death strikes. Like it was just incredible amounts of healing he was able to do himself. Plus he could AMS the, um, the Rift Maw and like it fully soaked it from what I was seeing. And they were like four stacks of the D of Skolex getting buffed. And from Zephyr saying what a lot of chats say is going later into the tier, it kind of shows what's kind of being needed. And what's grips being ne needed later on in the tier. And it looks like Anduin and later bosses will have a bunch of adds being spawned. Having death, having a mass grip is going to be vital in those cases. So I think with those cases, I think for Skolex alone, I think B, B is kind of a good tier for this character. But like I said, it doesn't really bring what these other three bring. Um, Demon Hunter, on the other hand, I would honestly put this character kind of on a uh, kind of B tier as well. He can easily jump um, during the knockup on Skolex. He can jump back down to the bottom um, chat. 
He can literally just leap back to the spot. If you need a stack and your warlock's on cool, your warlock gates on cooldown, you can simply leap into the stack and get the boss to pop back up. Very easy. And if you do die, if you make a mistake, you have your last stand. That's like every five, every six minutes, and you can live with that. So you can literally run if you wanted to. Um, you could run um, Splintered Heart. And then you could run, you know, obviously you would have your final stand ability and you could just rotate to two of them. And you could just negate you dying or wiping the raid by that. D tier for this boss. Far, I mean, hands down, it would definitely be D tier just because you are bringing, you're going to be bringing an Arms Warrior or a Fury and they already have the Rally. I, I, don't, I really don't think the Warrior would be that decent uh, against Skolax just out of based off of these three characters up here i just don't feel like this class brings very much besides the rally but in the end of the day you're getting smacked by so much physical damage yes you can block people are gonna say oh you can parry all this other stuff but generally you're not bringing ash and hill you don't bring divine shield you don't bring spell wording you don't have 240k hp this remember now this monk can go down to d tier this monk is d tier if they if they nerf the tier set he's d tier but he's S tier if they don't nerf the if they don't nerf the tier set, currently speaking. So that's kind of what Skolex is looking like, guys. Uh, we'll do the last and final boss real quick. Might be pumping, but pumping doesn't keep it alive though. If you fall over due to Rithma, your raid wipes. So there's that too, right? They're kind of known for not being the most tankiest. Yeah, ne I mean, yeah, Necro Prod is definitely interesting, but end of the day, I mean, do you bring an Ashen? Do you bring a Kindred Spirit? Do you bring a Stampede Roar too? Like, there's a lot of stuff that these that these bring. And ease of use, like, if you mess up your trinket, right? If you misclick your trinket, let's just say you play bad, you misclick your trinket, you're dead. Because it hits you for, the Rhythm Law hits you for 220,000. And if you misclick your spell reflect, you're instantly dead. Where if you misclick something on this character and you're perfectly stacking your cake smash, you can live any any direct hit because you'll stagger it plus you'll live. Like, ease? <laughs> I'm not dying. Monk is definitely S tier. This is very spicy. Very spicy character. Because you don't have that much going on for you. And your ignore pains can literally get popped in like one hit. True. But does it buff more than Druid though? That's the thing. This guy has bark skin, almost bark skin perma, and like a thousand plus armor every single time he pops uh, his iron skin. Plus he has frenzy regen. Plus he has incarn. Plus he has bark skin. And if you're running Lego, you instantly it pops frenzy regen every single time. Like there's just so much survivability with Druid. Plus you have a you're giving people permanent eight sixteen percent haste. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. So, um, so that's Skolex, guys. That's my tier, li tier list for Skolex. I'm going to move on real quick. I'm going to move over to Artificer real quick. We're going to move over to Zymox, for those that don't know. So, Zymox, from the testing I saw, already off the bat, straight up, S tier. Like, guaranteed, S tier. Just due to the fact there's so many mobs on this encounter, every time you go to a new platform, you have literally so many ads that you have to pick up. And being able to death grip or mass grip them all together for your range, for your mages, for your warlocks, it's just a huge necessity. Like, I think you'd be foolish not to run a DK on this fight. Just because of all that stuff going on. And then on top of that, every single time you, um, they, uh, they explode any one of the enemies, you can literally pop AMZ and just negate so much damage during, during the suck-in. So if you have the suck-in as a DK and you're running out, you pop AMZ on yourself and then when they get sucked in and take all that damage... They can, they, it's literally negated because the tank explosion is negated by AMZ. So you literally don't, it literally saves your healer's mana. So that, I mean, that's huge. Plus all the ads, you can grip them to you, which is always a lifesaver when it comes to any, any encounter that has a bunch of ads. And like I said, going to later tiers and when a bunch of these other fights are looking like they're going to be having ad phases, DK is just reign supreme in those situations. And plus he has AMS for when he has the bomb on himself. Very good tank. Very solid choice. Um, another one I would put, um, like I said, ease of utility, ease of movement, easy forgiveness, something that you can 
really easily do without doing a lot of monk. It's just so easy, guys. Like, instead of you having, you're fighting the boss, right? It's you and the healer fighting the boss. Instead of you having to step into the portal to skip over the ring, you can literally just transcendence over the ring. You see the ring coming down on Zymox in the middle. You literally just put transcendence down. You step away, tell transcendence into the ring, and now you're safe. The boss doesn't even move. And you don't have to teleport. It's just easy. It's an easy take. It's just... It's a lifesaver. And then, let's say you have Bomb. You can literally pop two rolls. Boom, boom, boom. You're safe from the... You're super far away from the raid. Your thing blows up. And then you just Stampede and Roar out. Or, or you Tiger Lust out. It's just very easy. Very simple. Easy tank to play. Generally speaking. Uh, Jude, on this fight in particular, with currently the current testing we just did on mythic with how tight the dps check is on the ads um and just the boss in general wanting to push him down to the 75 percent to get him to in intermission uh, guarding jew is gonna be s tier here just due to the fact that with a kindred spirit always coming up you have stampede roar coming up and you know you're able to get those stampede roars up in and you're able to live paladin for this fight in particularly i'm gonna have to move on down a little bit to c tier just due to the fact of spell wording is such a long cooldown and you can only you can use that to get through the rings but he's such a slow tank he is such a slow tank he has one horsey if you're running the other the defensives one it's hard for the guy to pick up threat on multiple targets insanely quickly because they have to rock through the consecrate avengers shield has a long cooldown it's just it's not easy as a druid clicking thrash or monk clicking cake smasher dk gripping mall to him it's just very hard to pick up threat on this character and um that's also gonna be the same for i'm gonna put demon Hunter a little bit more on b tier just due to the fact that he can leap a lot he can infernal strike pretty much everywhere he can get out if he has bomb on him you can't leap over the ring but you can still leap into the teleport to get to safety and then leap into the teleport to get back and leap out with the with the suck and explosion it's kind of b tier there um but like I said, if you are running a Havoc, you won't be running this anyway, so who really cares? Prot Warrior. I mean, Prot Warrior in this fight, just due to the amount of movement you have in Heroic Leave, Charge is there. So I'll possibly um, move him up a little bit to um, around B tier, just because he does have Charge. He can instantly charge to the boss after he Heroic Leaps out with the mechanic. He still does have to do the portal jumping, so that's a little bit of a disadvantage. But he does have an instant thunderclap. Yeah, and he has an instant thunderclap to generate threat in the ads, which is something that Paladin lacks. So this is definitely going to be B, uh, B tier for Zymox here. And he does bring that rally. When you do get sucked in, you can bring that rally to kind of buff your rate team up if you're dropping low on HP. So I'll put him actually over here in front of the deep matter. Um, But generally, I think ease of play, DK makes it so easy on your rate team. Monk is i'll put him over here actually because he doesn't really buff anyone it's just easy to transcend over the rings and it's easy to pick up threat quickly and once again you can move the boss 50 percent movement speed on the provoke so that's really nice but druid kindred spirit is is after thinking about it for a while it's actually an incredible ability that's insanely strong if it doesn't get nerfed and just being able to you know be extremely tanky and be able to pick up threat on a bunch of ads with your thrash is really nice so yeah guys that kind of concludes my uh my tier maker that kind of concludes that so uh thank you guys please click that uh subscribe button at the bottom on youtube thank you so much appreciate you